Hello and welcome. Uh, today we're going to go through some example problems with Gauss's law. We're going to start off with the point charge. So, my question is, what is the electric field some distance r away from a point charge? The little circle in blue is my point charge, and it has a total charge of plus q. So I'm asking distance r away, what's the electric field? And so we can use Gauss's law to solve this problem. And the first thing we need to do is draw a Gaussian surface. So you'll notice I've drawn in a spherical Gaussian surface. Now why did I choose a sphere? Uh, you'll see later in the problem that the choice of a sphere makes the math a lot easier. And so let's write out Gauss's law. E dot dA is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. And let's get started with the math. So first things first, I'm going to expand the dot product on the left hand side of the equation. So a dot product is just the magnitude of E times the magnitude of dA times the cosine of the angle between them. So let's uh, expand that a little bit more. So I'm going to draw in a tiny little bit of area dA. Now dA has an area vector that points normal to the surface. Why? That's the convention. Right? We always say for a closed surface, the area vector is normal to the surface. And E is the electric field, and that's also normal to the surface. Now why is that? Well, take any point on the surface. Right, That point on the surface will see the same exact point charge in the middle, no matter which way you look at it. And because of that, the electric field has to be uh, pointing in exactly the same direction. The only way that can happen is if the electric field is pointing straight out. So the electric field is out by symmetry. In that case, the angle between them is 0, and the cosine of 0 is just 1. So we can just add that right in. Next thing, let's try and analyze the electric field a bit more. So let's draw an electric field at a couple points on the surface. And we notice that it's always the same distance r away from the point charge. And because of that, we know that the magnitude of the electric field has to be the same. Why? Once again, by symmetry. No matter where we are on the surface, we see the same exact point charge at the center, and thus we have to see the same exact electric field. The only way this is true is if the electric field is constant in magnitude on the surface. And if it's a constant, we can pull it out of the integral. And finally, let's analyze the dA. Well, what's an integral dA? It means take all those tiny little areas and add them up. Well, if you add up all the tiny areas, you just get the surface area of a sphere. So I can plug in the equation for the surface area of a sphere there. And now I can just finish up with a little bit of math. So I'm going to divide by 4 pi r squared. And I notice that 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught is just k. And so I can substitute in k, I can substitute in q for q enclosed, that's the amount of charge enclosed by my sphere, and I get kq over r squared. So just to finish up, uh, we use symmetry to simplify the dot product in Gauss's law. And then we take advantage of that spherical Gaussian surface in order to calculate the surface area and complete the problem. And it's good that we get kq over r squared because we get the same exact expression uh, for the electric field as we do in Coulomb's law. 